At every job, there's a work freak. I don't care if you work at Wendy's, McDonald's, Chase, Bank of America, FedEx, the police department, the White House. There is a work freak at every job. Usually these work freaks are using their sexual abilities to uh, increase work morale. Now, I don't know if any of y'all heard the story going around about these uh, police officers in Tennessee where one female officer was getting killed by the whole department. A Tennessee police department was in turmoil Tuesday following the allegations that at least five of its male officers had sex with a female officer both on and off off the job. In addition to violating departmental rules against having sex while on duty, they are also accused of impeding the investigation by lying about their actions and engaging in conduct unbecoming of an officer. I'm talking about they were having girls going wild type parties. Uh, she was sending pussy and titty flicks to, to the other officers in there. I also read that uh, her and one of the fellow officers had a threesome with him and his wife. Now, here's the crazy part about all this. She was married. She had a whole husband during all of this situation. If anybody's a victim, I believe he's the victim. Now, of course, if any of the other officers were married, their wives were victims too. But this man... This man is the main victim here, and the reason I'm throwing that victim card out, out there is because after all of this got exposed, after this woman lost her job, her fellow officers lost their jobs, she came back, and she's trying to sue and say that she was groomed. How was you groomed? You a grown-ass woman. You knew what you was doing. You got hired into that department and was around all that chocolate goodness, one of them Broke you off a piece of that Kit Kat bar, and, and now you're trying to take everything in the vending machine down. Like, bitch, let's call a spade a spade. Work relationships usually stay in the dark until, like, either somebody get to catching feelings or somebody get to hating. What I felt happened, somebody was trying to get on, because one of them niggas probably started running his mouth, like, well, you know that white girl? I be taking that white girl down, boy, that bitch got some good ass pussy. You know how, you know how niggas talk. You get to advertising some, some easy pussy at work, somebody else. Shit, where is she giving it up like that? Well, I'm trying to get in too. Folks probably tried to get in. She was like, nah, uh, the, the, the bus is full. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? The bus is full. Nick got in his feelings was like, all right, I'm going to the mayor. I'm going to tell the mayor that all y'all is in here fucking because she don't want to give me no pussy. I was intimidated. And I felt I needed to do it. I felt as I was obligated to do it because he was my superior. That's why you got to be careful. Like, if you are a supervisor or a manager at any type of business establishment, you should keep your dick in your pants. Because the last thing you want is for you to drop the drawers on somebody. And now they have that upper hand on you that they could come back and say, hey... Um, this person used their position to force me into sexual acts. Because that's what usually will happen. You feel me? That's like when you work at a job. Matter of fact, bro, I'll, I'll give y'all an example. Sexual harassment is a real thing. When you work at a job, you have to be very careful how you interact with your female counterparts or your male counterparts. But really, I'm talking to the guys, okay? So you might have a female that y'all are cool with at the job and y'all make little jokes and stuff like that. You know, y'all might flirt. It happens, okay? You work with somebody a lot, you develop a relationship, you start flirting. Now, here's the crazy part, right? One day, this woman might come in and be in a bad mood. And the same jokes that you've been making with her for about three or four years, you might happen to make that joke today. And now, she in such a bad mood, she take you to HR and say, hey, he's sexually harassing me. And that's how stuff usually happens. You know what I'm saying? It's never something that, like... I mean, it's sometimes. Sometimes, I'm not going to lie. It's dudes out here that force that type of conversation with their female co-worker who definitely was not comfortable with it and those type of situations yes take his ass to the hr office and put him up for sexual harassment just imagine somebody that you've been cool with for years you've been friends with for years and y'all just have that type of relationship that type of flirtatious relationship you know what i mean and then one day she just not in the mood and you do the same thing and now you sit in the hr having to write a statement Defending yourself ain't yo ain't nothing worse than going to the HR office over some sexual harassment allegations, bro. <sighs> Matter of fact, I got a story. I got a story to tell. Been working at this job, right? And it's two departments in one. I'm the machine operator at this department here, which is the air department, and um, they have another department, which is the mega department. So in the mega department, we have 
these two assemblers that I was really cool with. And I used to go over there and I used to talk to one of the assemblers. I'm not going to call her name, but she used to ride bikes and stuff like that. And she, bro, she was a freak, bro. Because the stuff we used to talk about, it was kind of like, <laughs> she just used to talk about these dudes that she used to be, you know, she used to be letting hit in her, in her little biker gang or whatever. I don't know if it was her flirting or she, she was trying to see, you know, how big my wood was when she's like, yeah, I, I could only take that, you know what I'm saying? I can't take nothing less than eight inches. If, if it's less than eight inches, it's smaller than me. And she's just like make jokes like that. Then her coworker who worked right across from her, so a Hispanic lady, she didn't really speak English like that, but she always wanted to get in the conversation. Now, the crazy thing is that like she was married and she been with her same husband for probably damn near 20, 25 years. He took her virginity and she ain't had no other outside penis, okay? So whatever experience she have is whatever he's on, you feel me? And she, a lot of the conversations me and her coworker was having, she just would be like, oh, I'm not doing that, oh, I'm not doing that. And I used to always say, hey, if you're not doing these type of things, man, because what we talking about is baby steps, your husband gonna cheat on you. I used to always be, up front about it like yo the way you sound it right now it sound like you just sit there and take it and we used to laugh about the shit or whatever oh i forgot to add she had a wagon the hispanic lady bro her butt her butt was crazy like her body was crazy i'm gonna be honest with you her body was crazy and i'm not gonna sit there and act like i never looked at her butt everybody looked at her butt the jeans that she wore looked like they were painted onto her ass. So she knew that people looked at her ass. Anyway, particular day, my boy um, had just dyed his hair. And all the women just loved this little, this light-skinned nigga with long dreads and shit like that. And this particular day, he came in and his hair was dyed blonde. We used to go to lunch together because me and him used to sit in the car and we used to write music. So he would come over and be like, hey, bro, I'm ready to go to lunch or whatever. And we'd go to, you know what I'm saying? We might drive to uh, Sonic. We might drive to Chick-fil-A or whatever. Feel me? So he came to get me so we can go to lunch. Those two ladies called them over there and they were like, oh my God, your hair is so nice. What made you decide to, to dye it this color? Jeez. And you know, so I'm s standing behind the trash can behind the lady with the big ass butt, right? But I'm in the trash can and I have my phone. I had my phone inside the trash can and I'm waiting. And I'm not going to lie, I was a little impatient because it takes a while to get from our job to Sonic and then you have to wait at Sonic for mad long to bring, you know what I'm saying, to get your food and shit like that. So I'm in a trash can like this with my phone. This lady turns around and she says, Why are you looking at my butt? And I'm like, What? She's like, I see you. I see you looking at my butt. I see you. I'm like, I'm not looking at your butt. I'm in my phone. I'm waiting for y'all to stop. She's like, no, 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 no. Uh, my boy, he's he seen that she was finna go crazy. Like, things was gonna escalate. So he like, come on, call. Come on, call. Let's go, call. Let's go, call. So we go to Sonic. I'm like, yo, bro, I ain't gonna act like I ain't never looked at this woman's ass before, dog. But the day I'm not looking at her ass, she just going to accuse me of looking at her ass. Like, that shit just made me feel so awkward, bro. Like, we went to Sonic, we got our food, I came back in, and I was like, yo. I went and talked to her, and I'm like, yo, I don't like people accusing me of stuff I didn't do, okay? I was not looking at your butt. I was just in the trash can on my phone waiting for y'all to stop talking to, to Brandon. And she's like, no, I see you. I see you look at my butt. Like, Four months pass, bro. I get called into the HR office, and the HR lady's like, hey, I got a statement from um, such and such, and you know, she's talking about a particular incident where you made her feel uncomfortable because you were looking at her butt. But the way the HR lady was saying it, she was just looking like, H I know HR was doing her job. She's trying her best to be professional, but she was just on some shit like this is this is some bullshit. Which she actually said afterwards, like when she ended up quitting, she was just like, yo, that whole situation was some bullshit. So she asked me what happened. I told her what happened. I had to write a statement about what happened, and then the lady that worked next to her had to write a statement too and kind of explain everything that happened. And she added extra shit. She was like, yeah, he was talk about me and my husband and, and this, that, and the third. And I'm like, yo, 
every conversation that I've had over there, the conversation was always with the other lady, right? And you would jump in the conversation, place yourself in there, place yourself in the scenarios that we're talking about. Like a year passed because she ended up quitting, I think, like a year after. We wasn't really speaking like that. Then a year passed, she left the job, and then she came back. And then when she came back, she apologized, right? She apologized. She was like, I'm sorry that I took you to the office. And then we ended up working together. And exactly what I told her was going to happen, that's exactly what happened. Because her husband ended up cheating on her. And she ended up finding out. Then dude cheated on her like three times. And she ended up finding out. And she was like, you were right. Everything you said, you were, you were right. And I say all that to say, man. You got to be careful with the sexual advances at work. You got to be careful with the type of conversations you have at work. I can honestly tell you that nothing good comes out of work pussy, okay? Nothing good comes out of being in a secret relationship with your coworker because eventually, if it doesn't work out, it's going to lead to hostility in the workplace. If it does work out, it's going to be hard to keep it a secret because eventually people are going to start finding out. Y'all words might be saying one thing, but y'all body language might be saying something else. So my, my advice to you is stay away from work pussy. Nothing good comes out of getting work kitty cat.